Hanging out, Tom Shepard live <laughs> in our Bud Light Studios and live on Coke TV. A reminder again, Lone Star Luau, the sixth annual music festival is coming up February the 2nd through the 5th. You're going to be hosting that, as or at least as part of the one of the hosts. And the lineup, we would be here all day and talk about that. Uh, but before you do anything, I would say go look at this Margaritaville Lake Resort that I had no clues in Lake Conroe. Yeah, it's just been, it's only been open for two years. Uh, it was another resort, and I guess uh, went out of business or something. And Margaritaville, you know what they I've found in the last few years, Margaritaville will seek out older resorts, and they come in and they remodel the whole thing and put their branding on it and just make it awesome. There's a whole culture. We mentioned Jeep culture. Yeah. The and. I asked you earlier, so you're trop rock now. You said, no, not completely, but there's a whole tropical music vibe culture that goes that that is huge, and they seem to have a lot of money. But it re- yeah. reminds me of this whole Margaritaville thing, the same thing. It's true. It's uh, you know people that have been fans of Jimmy Buffett for a long time. They're also you know the people that go to see you know Kenny Chesney when he comes to town or Zach Brown. You know all those guys have kind of their country, but they have you know beach songs in their repertoire, but. Um, yeah, a lot of these folks, they're just uh, diehard music fans. They're fans of songwriters, you know. So um, part of our goal of doing the Luau is, like, to introduce a lot of our, you know, kind of cross-pollinate, I guess, you know, introduce our Texas music fans to the beach music artists that we love and then also the beach music people to some of these Nashville songwriters that we're fans of, too. So all three things, you know, Nashville songwriters, people that do beach music and Texas music, um, there's a lot of crossover. I mean, and it's to me, it always has felt like it's the same type of person that likes all three of those kinds of music. Absolutely. Now, here's the other cool part. I don't know when it's going to happen. It's going to happen really, really soon. But Coke FM is actually going to give away some of these tickets and a stay at this Lone Star Luau. So, That's right. So make sure you keep listening. We'll have more details as we get closer. But uh, I'm going to be there. I'm excited about that. And clearly, it's not why you would show up. You would show up for <laughs> the Wilder Blue and Bree and Radney Foster and the, the collection of just great artists and what looks like it's going to be an incredible time. And you told me this a couple of years ago. I think we're at Music Fest hanging out. And you're like, hey, I got this new festival. And it was here, correct? Yeah. It was Well, it was in Marble Falls first. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, and then we outgrew it. So we had to get a bigger venue. Well, you got a bigger venue now. Yeah, it's way bigger. <laughs> All right, more details on this, February the 2nd through the 5th, 2023. You got a you got a show coming up this week if people are watching this or listening. Yeah, I'm at the Redbird Listening Room in New Braunfels, Friday night, November 18th. Yeah, that's crazy that we're still I know, it's tomorrow and we're a <laughs> week away from Thanksgiving. I know. Incredible. We're taking off all of Thanksgiving week though. Are you? Yep. Yeah, you're taking off. You get to practice with me. Teach me how to learn yeah, these I songs before we play. We're gonna have to do it via Zoom, I think, or something. <laughs> hey, just a lot of now. Nowadays, people record on Zoom, which is just crazy for me. We did half of the new Pelican record. Half of the record was done with a band in Nashville at Omni Studios via Zoom. We were in Idaho at our place up there in December, watching it snow with a guy on FaceTime who's the engineer, and then we had a. An audio feed, but we couldn't see the band, but we could just hear what they were doing, and then we just tell them. It's yeah, probably more better. That, it's probably better that. you couldn't see them. You could just hear. It's because we're all, that's what you really need, right? Yeah, just focused, you know. And um, it was great. It the stuff turned out. I'm really proud of how everything turned out. Album out right now. Can people get a hold of this if they want a copy of oh, it? Oh yeah, it's on all the online outlets, and you know, come see us in person. You can get the actual <laughs> CD. The hard you still part have is- a CD player. The hard part is you got to learn to spell Tom's name correctly. That's right. T H O M S H E P H E R D. Now, did, did you go like rock star business on that and spell it T H O M, like Thom purposely? Is that really <laughs> how your parents spelled it? I'm actually Thom Jr. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's my dad's name, too. And I mean, on my driver's license, that says T H O M. It's not Thomas. So when you were in school, did they say your name wrong? Oh, constantly. You were Thom? Constantly. Yeah, Thom, th- whatever. Just, Chip Heard? Yeah, just always. I mean, I remember signing up for songwriter nights and national people going, oh, is there a Thor? A Thor <laughs> here? <laughs> you break the big gavel up. But no, there was no show business move. That was uh, Grandma Shepherd's idea. When, uh, when my dad was born, my grandma thought it would be cool to name him Tom but spell it different. All right, last thing I want to ask you about is you're going to be at Music Fest with Coley this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in years past, you and I went skiing together. You were my ski yep. partner. We always talked about going, but 
Then you moved to Idaho and you went skiing every every day for a while. Yeah, I'm better now. I know I'm way that's, better. That's why I'm saying <laughs> you're probably not going to ski with me anymore. No, I still. I, I, well, I'll say this. Are you a cruiser blue or you're up there on the blacks now? I don't like the. I've done the black slopes, but it. That's it's. I get too nervous on those. I, I'm a solid blue guy now. A blue slope. I got to go 18 days this past season. And during COVID, I got to go 28 days because in Idaho, where we live in Sandpoint, um, there's a ski resort 20 minutes from the driveway. Yeah, you would post every day, hey, I'm going skiing again today. I'm like, Tom, you got a job anymore? <laughs> I know. Well, all our shows were canceled. It's like, what are you going to do? Well, so, I, <laughs> might I'm, as well go ski. I make it a point every concert that I'm at to really recognize if there's people in front of us, do y'all remember when we didn't get to do this? Yeah. Do we all remember when we couldn't gather together and we weren't in a mask? Yeah. And you guys were the first to go, meaning live music, and really the last to come back. It's true. So it's not lost on me that it wasn't that long ago, two and a half years, that we didn't. you didn't get to come in the studio anymore. No. You didn't play anywhere. anywhere. You just went skiing, apparently. <laughs> right. This is true. I need to write a song, you know, like the Daryl Worley song, Have You Forgotten? You know, like about, like, you know. Have you forgotten when we had to wear masks, when we couldn't go to live shows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, a lot of artists in this scene had to give it up. Yeah. I was. It, it was a great time to start because you weren't completely jaded. But if you were one of those that were kind of a mid-category artist, meaning that you were your band was on a salary, a lot of them had to say, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. It was a tough time for this industry. It was tough. It was tough. Yeah, we had to. It really made us look at stuff, though, and I mean... I mean, we're blessed to get to do music for a living, you know, but there, you know, there's some shows that when they canceled, I was, at first reaction was, oh no, uh, what are we going to, how are we going to pay the mortgage, you know, but some, some of the shows were like, I'm kind of glad that one canceled. I didn't want to <laughs> go back and do that one. Not that, not that we don't all do shows that are great, but you know what I mean? Some things kind of have their life and then you want to move on to the next chapter. So one of my favorite parts of the music coming back and sometimes it still feels like it's coming back on some levels, is to watch the audience. Because I think not only did the artists take it for granted, we took it for granted too. Uh, yeah. The fans took it for granted. But when when those first shows started happening, those jaded bands that were just kind of going through the motions, you really saw some energy that we haven't seen up on that stage again, uh, running around, trying as hard as they can to get those licks and you know bend those strings like they haven't before. For and I'm still a fan before I'm anything, you know, a radio guy, yeah. but still a, a, a jaded fan as much as anything. <laughs> but to get back out there and people watch and just yeah. watch the joy, and I think sometimes that's what we took for granted is how much music, literally, and for me, it's live music. Oh uh, yeah, how much it affects our everyday life. Oh yeah, it's, a, it's such a blessing. And and living in Texas is, you know, I mean, we're really lucky because there's so much of it here to go see. I would call us jaded. Yeah. Because right. we, we do. Spoiled. Spoiled. We get a little bit more music. I mean, if you did the same show downtown Austin, but you went way up north in some secluded town in, in uh, Nebraska, it's a different kind of audience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's music lovers everywhere, but I just I was always felt that, like, it seems like it's just in the blood of, of people that are from here. Yeah, we love it here. Yeah. And love you, Tom, for coming in today. Oh, thanks for having me. Do one more song for you before I push you out of the studio. All right. <laughs> I want to do the, should I do the title track maybe of it? Do the title track. It's called The Pelican, and I, this was inspired by going down to Gulf Shores, Alabama, and our friends had a house right there on the water on this thing called Little Lagoon That's right there. That's terrible. That's terrible to have those friends. It's awful. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you want to do beach gigs? Yeah. Write beach songs. <laughs> But uh, that's a smart hustle, Tom Shepard. Exactly. But uh, anyway, this song is called The Pelican. I've always been fascinated by reincarnation. I wondered what I might come back as. An old front porch blue healer or nautical healer. A seahorse or a big jungle cat. There's no way to know where we go when we go. But if I was given the chance on the day that I die, I would take to the sky and fly like the pelican can. 
So high with the wind in my back, no trouble in mind. And so out of care anymore. On the trade winds I'll ride. Nothing but me and the sea and the sky. All the way to my worldly woes left far behind. He might look prehistoric, but he's more handsome for it. Is that a waddle or a swagger and thing? But he's sleek and romantic and quite aerodynamic. A classic wants he's on the wing. Just skimming the waves and fishing all day above the surf and that soft sugar sand. On the day that I die, I will take to the sky and fly like the pelican can. So on the day that I go, you might feel my shadow cross over. Oh, but don't cry for me. Just be glad and knowing that when I get where I'm going, I'll be happy and finally free. A five-feathered sensation just flying formation, diving for an anchovy or two. Then I'll rest in my nest with the one I love best While the sun sets on Little Lagoon And I'll fly so high With the wind in my back No trouble in mind And so Not a care anymore On the trade winds I'll glide Nothing but me and the sea and the sky All the way to my worldly woes left far behind On the day that I die, we'll take to the sky And fly like the pelican can That's a good song, Tom. Yeah, thank you. I like that. I understand now why it's the title cut. Have you yet played a song or played a gig near the sand while you're singing that and saw a pelican? It's weird. It's almost like they're on cue. It's it's like the flyover of the of the Blue Angels or something. <laughs> you know? Time Several perfectly. Several times when I've really. done this song. It's weird because you're singing that. And I'm like, that's an emotional song. Uh, clearly. But I, I can't imagine being there on the beach, hearing that song, and look over, and there's a pelican. Yeah. Oh, yeah, many times. Many times they come flying by. It's uh, uh, almost as if on cue. So, yeah, so it's pretty magical. Somebody's out there throwing, <laughs> throwing yeah, the fish out. <laughs>